for the sake of the glory of your great and mighty and awesome name. For you listen with compassion to the prayer of your people Israel. Blessed are you who listens to prayers. And that we are done with that. So you may be seated. And all right. Um I think one of the big things we need to talk about today, Rosh Hashanah, today is the day of judgment. Yom Teruah, the blowing of the shofar, but it's also the day of judgment. It's the day that God opens the gates of heaven. And he takes out three books. The book of life, the book of death, and the book of the ordinary. Is on the day that we look to him for salvation, we look to him for forgiveness, um, we look for to him for compassion. Even though we say for another year, but in reality is for eternity. Um, What we're reading here in Jeremiah is in the last days. The day when Yeshua does come, as we read in uh, is it Luke I can't, or Matthew, I can't remember which one, uh, Matthew 24, that we really need to look at because the time is nearing. We're seeing the signs that Yeshua talked about. Anyways, what we're reading is what was said of old. Um, that's going to happen. We're going to see um, of the rapture, Messiah, but it's misinformation. It's uh, a misinterpretation. It's not real. It's not what's going to happen. And I'm sorry to say it because I know a lot of you are caught on that because you think you're going to miss. Uh, what's called the tribulation in time. But when they went through the plagues of Egypt, God protected his people. Sure, they see, they took part in the first three, but after that, God protected them, separated them from the rest of Egypt. Yeah. And that's what we're, that's what we will experience too. It's going to be tough. Some of us might not make it. Some of us who do, we'll see. God's protection on us. And he will protect us during that time. But we will go through it. We will be a light. It's so important to spread God's word. Uh, Rabbi Menachem Schneerson used to teach, and, and some of the others too, but used to say that uh, we should spread the opportunity to be able to teach somebody who has something to say. And we also know that uh, the Sora has written a study, study to show yourself approved, right? Approved by God. Um, I don't know how it goes. Um, anyway. I know that I can't remember the verse is that. But that's what we need to be doing. We need to be studying to show ourselves the proof. And the study isn't just reading. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's okay. Um, that, that doesn't just mean reading, reading this stuff. It means getting in there, finding out what Hebrew 
this thing. There's, there's, uh, the Hebrew words themselves aren't just letters for words. We know that, right? We know they're also word pictures. They're, they're numbers and they're musical notes. So we have all four of those things just in the Hebrew itself. Yeah. 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 And there's, uh, and there's a lot of uh, different things that um, that we can learn from the Hebrew and the, just the names of places and people, you know, but to show ourselves approved. And what we got going on is that is that Yeshua, when he comes back, and it talks about this here as we as we read this, is that he's going to gather the people. He's going to what we would refer to as the great Exodus. So we have Exodus from. And that, that was a great thing, too. But the exodus, when Yeshua comes, is going to be greater than that exodus. It's going to be so much greater. Um, uh, and he's going, to bring us, he's going to bring us back to the land. Um, uh, verse 6 of 31, Jeremiah 31. Um, verse 7, if you're in the Christian Bible. For here is what Adonai says. Sing with joy for Yaakov. Shout for the chief of the nations. Proclaim your praise and say, Adonai, you have saved your people, the remnant of Israel. Verse 7. Look, I am bringing them, gathering them from the far ends of the earth. Among them are the blind and lame, women with children, women in labor. Altogether, a vast throng returning here. They will come weeping and praying as I bring them back, I will lead them by streams of water. They won't stumble. For I am a father of, to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn son. And it says on verse 9 through, Nations, hear the word of Adonai. Proclaim it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel is gathering him, guarding him like a shepherd, his flock. For Adonai has ransomed Yaakov, redeemed him from the hand too strong for him. They will come and sing to Zion, of Zion, screaming to the goodness of Adonai, to the grains, the wine, the olive oil, and the young of the flock and the herd. They themselves will be like a well-watered garden, never to languish again. Then the virgin will dance for joy, young men and old men together, for I will turn their mourning into joy, comfort and gladden them after their sorrow. I will give the Kohanim their fill of rich food, and my people will be satisfied with my bounty, says Adonai. <clears throat> and then we read in Matthew, where Yeshua is talking, starting with verse 29 of Matthew 24. But immediately following the trouble of those times, the sun will go dark, the moon will sh stop shining, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in heaven will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. All the tribes of the land will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with tremendous power and glory. He will send out his angels with a great shofar. Great shofar. And they will gather together his chosen people from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Great shofar. Today is the blowing of the shofar. It's a day of warning, saying, hey, the time is getting near and we need to get right with God. We need to make sure we're right with God. And, uh, you know, we talk about the seven years of tribulation, right? God even that even the righteous would would be gone, right? Would be taken in by it. Um, but the seven years, right? And so we have basically we have in the diaspora we have uh, two days of uh, well, three days of uh, Yom Kippur. So we have the first day, second day, then um, the fast of Gedalia. That's a part of that, so three days. And then there's, and in between that time, between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are 10 days. Okay? The first of Nisan is Rosh Hashanah. I'm sorry, it's Tishrei. No, the first of Tishrei. Tishrei is Yom Kippur. So there's 10 days between. And three days are a warning for us to get ready that the gates of heaven are opened and the three books are opened. The, so the book of life, the book of the, the wicked or the 
look at the ordinary student who has not made a decision one way or another. And so that leaves us three days, Rosh Hashanah, seven days, what we call the intermediate days, the time of the ordinary for people to seek forgiveness. The time that we, as people, go to, uh, even before that, we start a month early going and making things right with people that we've wronged, willing to forgive people who have wronged us. Because God talks about that. Yeshua even talks about that. You know, if you bring your offering and you remember you have something against your brother, go and make it right. Forgive him. Come back. And then bring your offering. That way God will accept your offering. That way God will forgive you too. If we're not willing to forgive people, God isn't willing to forgive us. That's just how simple it is. And even though sometimes it can be hard, and I know that, sometimes we just have to. It's not for them. Just so you know, it's not for them why we forgive them. It's for us. Whether they accept it or not. If not, we know that uh, it will destroy us if we don't. Yes. And so we have to, yeah, we have to give up this anger towards other people. We have to just forgive them and praise God. Get together with, you know, pray every day. Seek God every day. Walk in his ways. Be a light for other people. You can't be a light if you have no fuel, right? Word of God. Yeshua is our shamash, our servant candle. It's through him. It's full. That's our light, right? He is the living Torah. He is the living Torah, the Word of God. And without Him, we don't have light. We don't have hope. But we can have hope in knowing that these days are, you know, coming to an end. When I have no idea. He, Yeshua even said that the angels don't know. He doesn't even know. Only God knows, right? Only the Father knows. to understand that we don't know. So we need to be prepared, right? It's uh, um, the 12th uh, uh, saying of Jewish faith is that I believe in the coming of the Messiah. I know he may delay. I wait daily for him, right? And that's what we need to do. We need to wait daily, minute by minute. That we, But waiting doesn't mean just sitting around waiting. That means we're out doing something. We're out doing the works of our Father, right? We're out doing the works of the kingdom, building up the kingdom, bringing the kingdom in, right? Because when he comes, he's going to gather his people from all four corners of the earth, bringing Jerusalem, the, the great exile. And from there, he's going to build the third temple. Third temple will be built at that time. It'll begin its uh, job again, which is what they were supposed to do, what they were going to do. As we read in the last uh, chapters of Ezekiel, the Messianic temple. <coughs> and then he's going to gather his army and go and conquer the, the nations. The nations will fight against him. Not all the nations, but many of the nations will fight against him. And those nations that do survive, it says, will go up every year to the festival of Sukkot, which is a festival for the nations. During that seven days of Sukkot, there's eight days, but the seven days of Sukkot, which is coming soon, um, seven oxen are offered up, one for each of the 70 nations. But on the eighth, eight being the beginning, God has given mankind 6,000 years and then with the Messiah. But then what happens to that day? That is separate from the Messianic era. A lot of people kind of confuse the two. But in that day, the last day of the Messianic era will be a mighty battle called Armageddon where the adversary is released. And he will gather his army from the people 
who lived on the earth that that uh, didn't dedicate themselves during this time to God, and they will fight against God. And at that time, the adversary and the, the evil prophet and the follow them. Will it says that they shall be burned up and cease to exist. And uh, those of us that survived that were part of that to the rest, which is the world to come, which is the eighth day when the earth is returned, renewed. The heavens and the earth are renewed back to the original creation that God had intended for them, for us to live in. And we will live there. We'll no longer, it says we will no longer need a sun and a moon because God will be our light for us. There will no longer be a temple in Jerusalem because all get to worship God. The thing that we need to look at right now, though, is that are we ready? Are we ready to Israel to uh, help in the building of God's kingdom on earth for the Messianic era? Are we able to be a light for other people? And it's not just reading, studying, and stuff too, but but living it out, right? Um, this is a, a a lifestyle. It's not just something we believe and do one day and then live an ordinary life or whatever. It's it's a life command, studying, praying, and teaching people, living our our life to other people, right? Other people, even today, you know, people watch watch us. Are they real or are they fake? Right? And we've seen enough fake people. Seen enough fake people. But let's not us be fake. This is a lifestyle. We should be praying every day. We should be reading and studying every day. Right? And we should be walking in his ways. To the best of our ability, right? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Come on. blast and and okay i'm sorry so this is a season of repentance and coming back to god and the shofar blast remind us of how we are to do that okay so the first one is tikiya it's pronounced tikiya as i just said um one long note that acts as a summons so god is calling each of us for this purpose of repentance right it is also often um used as the sound for a king's coronation so why are we repenting? Because the king is coming back, and we need to prepare our hearts and our minds to meet mm -hmm. him, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. The second one is the shavarim. The shavarim is uh, three breaks. It's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. That's uh, um, compared to weeping. So when we prepare our hearts and minds and our souls, we are weeping and mourning for the the acts that we have done against God. We're, we're asking for forgiveness. Yes? Is that why the month is even more sad during these holidays? It's a time to repent and to think about what you've done and what <coughs> you need to do differently. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. So yes, it is supposed to bring mourning. It is supposed to make you regret the things that you have done improperly throughout well, the year. I was like laying in bed earlier, just like Oh man, why am I sad? Yeah. So Terua, Terua is that one, right? <laughs> um, that is um, um, an urgent alarm. So now he's telling you, wake up, quit slumbering, get on your feet. You've got stuff to do. You've got work to accomplish right now, right? So you're repenting, and you're doing the works of God, right? You're repenting, you're weeping, feeling the sorrow that you have been separated from God, and now God is is now trying to get up. Alarm, distress, <laughs> and <laughs> parts are having a hard time getting up. Yeah. 
jump straight into the air and straight down, straight up, straight down. I said, jumping up and down like this, and that gets all the rest of them all excited. They say, come on, let's go, right? That's what you Okay? Or uh, chevrolet. Chevrolet, yeah, chevrolet. Okay. Now, the last one is the, the king of the door, right? Which is the sound of the king. It, the king is coming. That's great. That's your last warning. That the king has it's entered coming. the field. Right? So, so. Yeah. Yeah. And that was my beautiful wife with her thing that she shared with us. That's great. Awesome. Um, yeah, so we, it's time. We need to take things serious now. Yes, it is a time of sadness because where are we? Where do we fit? You know? <laughs> I teach that we should never think of ourselves as attaining righteousness, that we should be working on it every day. We should be thinking of ourselves as not attaining it and, and be humble and continue walking in that way, right? That's what we need to do. We need to understand that Yep, we've come farther this year than we were last year, but we still have a long ways to go, right? And we don't know how far. We probably only got like two years. We already got like right that. We don't know. We got an yeah. It's just like uh, two is that we are not to try and um, predict when the Messiah is going to come. And I've, I've seen, especially amongst Christians, how many times they say, oh, the Messiah is coming on this day and so forth, several times. And, and how many people, when that doesn't happen, have been felt defeated and, and let down and have given up? We don't do that. God doesn't want us to do that. God knows when Yeshua is going to come. We don't. You can say whatever number you want, and maybe you do get it right, but you don't change it, right? You know? Okay, nobody's going to get it right. That's, that's not our job to do. Our job is to be ready. Our job is to out and minister to people by living our lifestyle as a witness to them, to God. It could happen any second. We don't know. Life can end any second, right? So what are we doing in the meantime? You know, it's like a, somebody told me, I can't remember who 